Hey, what's up, DIYers? Wires Mike Bors with the Mike Bors channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking reverse osmosis systems, and in the event that yours is continuously draining, we're going to talk about the most common causes. Let's get started. All right, DIYers, Wires inside the kitchen now, and our reverse osmosis system is a GE model, and there is the faucet, and we like it. We like it a lot. Let's go down below and open up the cabinet doors. On the right-hand side, you see our filtration case with all the filters. On the left-hand side, there is our storage tank. I'm going to turn on the light here. Coming down below, DIYers, check this out. Right back here, that is the water line that feeds water from the water case or filters all the way to the storage tank. And it ain't moving, and that is not good. So if yours is like that, or it's moving just a slight bit, that's not normal. We need to get this fixed. And you can see a little bit of bubble coming through. And again, in the event that your system is continuously draining, let's take a look. Look at that black drain line or hose. See how wet it is? That is not normal. Now, don't get me wrong. Water is supposed to flow out of there. That is the water that's basically filtered through the system and taken out of the water. Clean water goes to the tank. Dirty water exits the upper faucet and through the air gap system and down this black drain into the plumbing and out of your house so you don't drink it. However, it's not supposed to be continuous flow. And I just checked the thermometer on our wall. It's 74 degrees inside the house. And basically the water from the well is much colder than that. So you've got this condensation buildup. And again, it's just supposed to trickle and drip down this line, which would never accumulate that much moisture and condensation on this drain hose. So as you can see, if yours looks like that, hopefully we are going to get this fixed. First thing we are going to do, come back to the back and close our shutoff valve. And in most cases, you turn it to the right until it's completely closed. And again, that shuts off all water to the system. Up top, I got a mason jar. And you can see, because most of the water is going down the drain hose, well, there's not much in the tank. The tank itself is very light. If yours is very light, well, you have nothing in there. If it's heavy, well, that's good news, actually. You'll have water. However, as you can see, our system is not filling. So I'm going to leave that right there, and I'm going to come back down below, and I am going to disconnect this water line from the upper tank. And this is a push fitting, this little yellow part here. You push down and simultaneously pull up on the water hose. I may need both hands. However, before that, I do want to point out way back there, you can basically see where the water is stopping. See it right there? basically right in that area water is literally not flowing and it's like that when we've got the water shutoff valve in the full open position where it's supplying water to the entire ro unit again not normal let's go ahead and disconnect that line water line has been disconnected i placed a bowl to catch some of the water and a little bit did come out from here i'll be able to pick this entire tank up and we will remove it from underneath this sink and we'll head outside and show you what we're going to do next we think this is waterlogged we need to fix it. First thing I'll do though, is tip the tank upside down over the sink and try to get some water out. At this point, I've got it resting on the grass at a downward slant. And I'm just going to pump just maybe five to seven pumps. And that looks good. For the refill process, I'm going to drain this all the way down to zero and tip it upside down once again. And releasing the pressure down to zero is going to weaken and lower that internal bladder. And hopefully I can get more water out of it. Maybe, let's hope. Surprisingly, a little bit did come out. To the right side where the filter case is. And again, on the backhand side, that little flow restrictor that connects to the red line, it's got a push fitting on the very bottom. We are going to remove that. And believe it or not, we just replaced that about two months ago, but we are also worried that that might be an adding cause to our issue. So we are going to replace that flow restrictor that's only two months old. It's only $4, so that's okay with us. However, before that, I'm going to remove this pre-filter. It's gonna leak some water. And get it upright ASAP and you can see inside there it is dribbling some water and I'm going to do my best to get this off with you being able to see it but I will need my hands on each side as I pull this out and there it is all right DIYers wires on the left hand side is the new flow restrictor and make sure the orange inserts in there and here is a diagram there is the flow restrictor there's that little orange insert 
and if you pull your old one out and the orange insert is not connected, in other words, loose inside the connection area or housing, reinsert this flow restrictor, give it some friendly forward pressure inside, and that should lock this insert in place, and then you can pull it back out, and it should look like that, and it will come apart. However, right, let's go ahead and insert the new one. Now, out of the package, here is the new one. Again, there's that little orange insert that goes inside the flow restrictor. Coming back down below, I'm actually going to reconnect the red line to the top portion first. And from here, I will carefully turn this and align it into the red fitting and push in until it is secured. Next, I go ahead and carefully realign the pre-filter and snap it in place. I'm going to open up the shutoff valve by turning it all the way to the left. And from here, check for leaks as it pressurizes. It usually takes about two to three hours. You will begin to hear the faucet begin to make crackling sounds and leave that faucet in the full open position until you have water flow out of the faucet. At that point, you can shut the faucet handle and close the system and allow it to pressurize. And you can hear it getting close. And as we wait for that water to come out, come back down below to your drain hose, wipe it down, clean it up, dry it up, and make sure it is in a complete downward slant position feeding into the plumbing. Because again, in the event that your drain hose comes down and then is flat or level, that is not how it's supposed to be. Water is starting to drip out. I'm going to close that faucet handle. And from here, again, just be patient. Two to three hours, allow the system to pressurize. All right, DIYers, it's been about 15 minutes down below. There is the water. You can see it filling right there. And after about 15 minutes, that's basically the rate you want it at. And here in about two to three hours, it will be slightly faster. So that again is what it is supposed to look like. We are back in business. Hopefully this helps. Hey, do us a favor, below the video, you will see that thumbs up icon, click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.